What is up, players? It's Warboss Tape and this mug. Welcome to a second attempt, take two, at doing a video recording using the webcam that I've purchased for my new computer. So the first attempt at doing a video, we looked at these bases from this company called Basics, 40 millimeter trench bases, and um, it was, you know, it was a good attempt at doing, it was a good first attempt at doing a video using the webcam, but what I realized was that I have a computer that is HD and can record in very crisp quality and uh, I don't really need to use the webcam to record that kind of stuff. I think for miniatures and anything like that, you really want to look at it off of the, the digital camera. What this is perfect for though, this webcam, is being able to look at something that I can use two hands to really demonstrate but and not have to worry about things like um, with the camera there's only so far I can zoom out because I'm using a table mounted tripod so having a book and turning it and showing it to the camera at this angle because the camera is my digital camera is on the side of me is not effective so what is effective though books 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 so we're going to take a look at this one book by Osprey Publishing and I have heard from multiple people that they are the the historical the company to go to if you are doing historical wargaming and the thing that makes it so different because I'm used to games workshops how to paint this or how to paint that or a codex with a catalog of miniatures at the end I remember getting this book first of all thinking that's kind of thin. It's not very substantive. There's only 40 pages. and 40 pages, that includes the index on the back. I know Dookie is like, what, 40 pages? Boof! So the, what the book does have, though, is content. And what I mean by that is historical content and accurate facts that you can follow. And it's like having a history book that is geared specifically towards war gamers. So right on, on the front, on the cover, it says men at arms. Uh, I'm not sure if that means that there's other kinds of, or if that is just like their, what is like a publishing arm of, well, Osprey Publishing, men at arms. I wonder if that means that there's like a cavalry and archers and other kinds of, of uh, unit specific books. <laughs> They're so happy. They're so happy. Uh, the reason why I got this is because I have six millimeter Byzantines, Byzantines for, that have been uh, donated to me from Ringo Simpkins. And uh, I really want to get back to that, especially now that I've got bases. I've got a whole honking bag full of 20, mi 20 millimeter by 40 millimeter bases to put them on. So that's another reason why I wanted to do this video because I want to get back into that. But um, as, a, as a demonstration of how to use the webcam, let's take a look at what this book has. So you can see they sp they're very specific about the time period that they're pulling from. And what I've done is I just, I was reading it and I was like, I got to highlight some of this stuff. It's so interesting. Um, it talks about why the Byzantines were s regarded as such a powerful military force. They have... Um, they, they were really good at the complex motives of plot and counterplot, flattery and threat. The uh, Emperor's first class intelligence service ha was called the Office of Barbarians. Um, they frequently bought off their enemies with treaties and bribes rather than squander men and material in potentially fruitless campaigns. That is awesome. They, they, I mean, these guys were like totally little finger in Game of Thrones. You know, bribing and promising treaties and uh, rewards to their enemies so that they would not have to fight them and even today torturous and underhand behavior is sometimes described as Byzantine so I I'm not gonna read all of the stuff that I that I highlighted but just looking at that the first page is basically you know a, a high school students page long essay on why the Byzantine empire was so awesome and then you go into the organization of their military and you get th things like descriptions descriptions and uh, labels and uh, the, the terms 
of of what they used to call their their um, their formations, their weapons, their armors, what they were called, how they were made, what the purpose was. You have art and um, obviously different kinds of of um, ancient artifacts to look at. Mostly, mostly like a lot of art and these. Um, gosh, what do you call them? Plaques. A lot of plaques, but. Um, I s found a lot of cool things in here about the uh, the officers, the structure of the military, how they would fight, the different kinds of um, campaigns that they went on. It was really, really interesting stuff. And I remember I bought this specifically because I wanted to know how to paint Byzantine soldiers, or like what colors they were, and what colors should I use, and were they uniform, were they not, w what was the heraldry on their shields like. And in the end, I, I'm just ending up reading and uh, I, d I obviously didn't highlight all of this because the first time I read it, I just absorbed it like a sponge. And all this information on the, uh, the mercenaries they would hire, the, the different kinds of formations they would use, and then you get to the art or the uh, color plates. So what's cool is that they tell you what one of the soldiers, what unit they would be in mostly, most probably, and the kinds of uniforms. These look like my high school gym socks. That about um, servants, pack mules, unarmored infantrymen, and then uh, cataphractos. I saw that and I was like, oh, cataphracti terminators. They were um, like heavy shock troopers, I believe. Cavalry standard bearer, cataphractos. Very like highly prestigious, you know, just like the cataphracti terminators. But some of these terms are very reminiscent of 30k stuff. The emperor in parade armor. Uh, Basilicoi Anthropoi, Guard Officer. Hey, this guy's on the cover. Russ Mercenary? What? Lehman Russ? Varangian Guardsman, Varangian Guardsman in dress uniform. Trapezitos, Patsanak Mercenary. Italo Norman Mercenaries, late 11th century. So basically, you have an idea of what their color palettes were, what they look like. And obviously, on a six millimeter model, which is, you know, only so big, you're not gonna be doing fine detailing and you're not gonna be coloring all of the belt buckles and, um, you know, doing complex highlighting and stuff. But the fact that you are able to get an idea of what individual troops look like, I think was really cool. Uh, burning of the black water, setting fire to other boats, crazy. So, I think the pluses of this book, or let's see, let's see what the what the description is. The uniforms, equipment, history, and organization of the world's military forces, past and present. That's what Osprey does and specializes in. What would I grade this book as we're going on to eight and a half minutes? As a piece of uh, historical, you know, reference as a reference for historical facts and. Um, information. It is, Osprey does amazing work and it's written very easily. You don't feel like you're attending a college course or looking through, you know, a very comprehensive scientific journal. It really reads to the average war gamer, I think. And it's interesting because it's historical, it's historically based. You get to know all of the terms, uh, you get a feel for the language and the culture and the history. And um, I, I love it. If I had one criticism about these books is that you don't ever see an example of the armies in units. You get to see individual armies, but it, it, I, don't, I don't think it mentions if these designs on the shield were for a regiment or personal heraldry. Uh, obviously this would be for an army because it's, it's a standard bearer. But a lot of these shields, like the colors, the designs and patterns, it would be cool to see or to know what they were, uh, what they represented, and uh, to talk a little bit more about the colors for wargamers who are actually going to use the color plates as examples for their uh, painting their miniatures. Other than that, fantastic book. I would highly recommend it. If you are into historical 
Wargaming, you probably know all about Osprey Publishing and um, I'm just now catching up, but thank you for watching. I hope this video was of some use to you and I can't wait to dive back into my 6mm uh, Byzantines the next time I can get some time away from all of my commissions. Thanks for watching everybody!